Hey designers, my name is Fyme MD and I'm a senior product designer with over 10 years of experience in Toronto. And today we are going to talk about three top UX tools that I feel every UX UI designer needs to apply in their design in order to help them enhance either their user performance in mobile app or desktop and to also figure out if the design is working online or not. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we get started, I would really appreciate it if you guys can just like this video. It would really help the YouTube's algorithm. Therefore, my video will get discovered more in search results, YouTube home, and etc. And also more of my subscribers will get to watch this video. So if you can do that, please, I will deeply appreciate it and also if you're new to the channel do not forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon and also like this video whoo all right now let's go ahead dive into it in this competitive environment we cannot rely on let's say intuitions to design app or website this world is very competitive and only the correct data sources help us design relevant websites or an app and these have been used by famous brands that we use every single day, like e-commerce sites as Canon.com, uh, Amazon.com, eBay, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, you name it. They all use data to enhance the user performance or the interface design um, of their products. That is why data-driven designs are extremely important. So today you guys are going to learn the three data-driven tools that I have been using in the last few years till now uh, which has helped me enhance the interface on my design or the user performance. UX analytics can be divided into two parts. Number one is qualitative analysis and number two is quantitative analysis. Thank God I edit my, my videos. So keep saying these two words over and over again and I guess you'll get used to it. So let's talk about number one, qualitative analysis. This tool gives behavioral analysis and help understands user behavior, such as usability testing, heat map, focus group studies, user feedback, dairy studies, session recordings. My favorite tool for this category is actually Hotjar. Hotjar is free, they have a free platform and they have a paid membership as well. Obviously with uh, paid membership, you can unlock more features and it holds uh, websites or app that has a lot more traffic into the website. But if your website, I think has around 500 to 1000 traffic per month, which is reasonable, Hotjar is a great tool to use. And also a lot of companies out there have been using Hotjar. So it's one of, the, one of the great things to learn and also add into your resume. This right here is Hotjar and I use it for my own portfolio website. By the way, the tabs are on the left side. So uh, you have your overview, you got your heat maps, recording and etc. So we are on recording. This is the desktop view and off the bat, you can tell a lot of people in the last 30 days, 361 clicks, wow have clicked on the portfolio text. That's, that's exactly what I wanted. When I want someone to come to a website, I want them to easily find um, my portfolio link. So that pretty much goes to Behance website. So, so this is great. And then 132 clicks, 12% in Dribbble, um, 41 clicks, which is 2% on YouTube and so on and so forth. Uh, you can see the performance of the heat map in mobile view followed by the tablet and also the, sc the scroll right here. So now this right here is the heat map. So the worst ones are, uh, you can see on the left hand side is um, gray and blueish. Green is still in the safe zone, but if you can have your entire page red to like yellowish, then you did a great job. My one is mostly red and a little bit of yellow, which is great, which means it's telling me that the content that I've laid out in my portfolio site, users are able to see it easily and the success rate is quite high in that. Um, you can also transform that into tablet and mobile. Yeah, I still don't have blue. That's great, man. That's really great. Followed by the recording. This is also one of my favorite features. So if I click play here, I can see what each, let me just stop this for, for one second. I can see on the right hand side what each individual users are doing on my portfolio website. So this person is from India. It was 11 hours ago. It was on desktop view. They use Chrome. This person has uh, a Windows PC, not Mac, and they came through 
Oh, they visited my, they, they found my portfolio site through YouTube, which is great, followed by these three actions. So when I click play, I'll see what they did. Oops, let me just play this again. Oops, I'm gonna wanna play this one more time. Go right here and play. Yeah, so there you go. So now when I go next, over here, I will see a different type of data. This person is from India, India, Asia, in Indonesia. So sorry, I said this country's name wrong. Uh, 14 hours ago, desktop, PC, Chrome, and also came from my YouTube channel. Wow, my YouTube channel is doing great. Uh, seven actions this person has done. So when I click play, I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to change the speed to 0.5 so it can be very slow. Another great example is, let's go right here. This person is from Pakistan, 15, hours ago desktop chrome pc and let's see what this person or what this person did I clicked on the portfolio link and uh yeah i think that's pretty much it yeah there you go you can see on the right hand side i have a ux service so it has different type of emojis uh, which can help me understand if the users liked my portfolio page or not so let's go to the next one Okay, this person is from Netherlands, one day ago, uh, desktop version, Chrome, and you have used Mac, so. But it's not telling me where they came from. That's interesting. Okay, so, clicked on dribble, and that's it. So, you know, this is my portfolio side. My main goal is for the users Oh wow, this person came from Taiwan and automatically trans translated into their language. This is so cool. Uh, one day ago, a uh, Windows guy and used Chrome came from my YouTube channel. So this is quite cool. Uh, basically, in my portfolio websites, I have nothing but links. So when you come to my website, let me just show you right now, actually. When you land on my portfolio, you see a little bit of information about me and everything else is just text. I have text all around here and then I have text over here. So it pretty much takes you to the next page. I don't care if the users leave my page to visit my portfolio website or even my dribble website and etc., which is exactly what I want them to do. And number two is quantitative analysis. Tools that are number driven like Google Analytics, which helps you understand facts. And also Google Analytics is 100% free. A lot of brands use it. I've been using, using it for X amount of years. It will also provide you data um, if you have a website that's responsive, so mobile, desktop, and tablet. Great tool. Uh, one of the good uh, bonus skill sets to add in your resume as well, just like Hotjar. And with Google Analytics, what you can do is you can read web analytics, A-B testing, click testing, form analysis, and much more. So go ahead, try Google Analytics. I'll link that below as well, just like Hotjar. So these are the benefits of UX Analytics. Find out where users are leaving and why they're leaving. It is not good for websites to have high bounce rate. Increase conversions. It can be something like getting users to buy a product or taking them to a funnel payment confirmation page. Great example for that would be based on a design that I have launched, say if it's a redesign, um, a great success rate for that would be if I can have at least 15 to 20% of the users per day uh, purchase a product or reach to the confirmation page, then my job as a UX designer has been successful. It is nearly impossible to get 100% of the users to buy a product based on your design. There's no such thing. I've been in this industry for more than plus years. I have never met a designer that has launched a design and the um, sales rate for that e-commerce page or whatever you wanna call it has gone from 15% to 100%. There's no such thing. And if you ever hear about it, it's most likely a lie. It's a designer ego thing. And now number three, increase users time spent on the website. Now the best recommendation for this, I would tell you to buy the book called Hooked. Um, I, don't, I don't have it on my shelf. It's, I think it's in the living room shelf right now. Uh, this book talks about how to make users stay longer in your website app or whatever you wanna call it. So check that book out. I have talked about this book a few times in my previous video. 
videos so check that book out and it's a very important step if you can make users last long in your website then there's a great promotion that you will most likely achieve a good salary a lot of companies and clients will definitely recommend you to their friends colleagues their business partner and etc obviously great websites like YouTube uh, Netflix Amazon um, eBay Instagram and ex and you know I think now Clubhouse they are doing a great job to make users come back and stay long in their platform and last but not least helps understand user journey to reduce exit rate. It is our job as UX designers to provide users with an experience and it's only possible if we keep a tab on all of the above points. So right now I'm going to show you what the three important tools which I use in Google Analytics and how it has helped me enhance the user performance of my design. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Now, well, the first thing I'm going to talk about is called the uh, check bounce rate. Number two is going to be, well, followed by with it is exit rate. And number three is other tools that I use in Google Analytics for my advantage. So this right here is Google Analytics and I'm only going to read my mobile data. I have desktop and my login and register pages right here. Um, right here, it just gives me a brief summary of my collective data right here and where is it under behavioral i'll click on overview this pretty much helps me understand what's going on in the last 30 days and the important information that is uh, very important for me so number one is page views unique page views times average time spend was 38 seconds that sucks <laughs> and bounce rate is 72 percent which is bad followed by the percentage of exit rate which is 49 percent just a quick FYI, bounce rate and exit uh, rate are like brothers and sisters. So you have to pay close attention with one another. And this is where the deep dive as a UX designer comes into place. So right now, let's, let's start with the bounce rate. I'm going to go to behavior flow. It pretty much gives me a site map of the entire website for the last 30 days. I can just carry on by clicking next 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 and next so it pretty much has a unlimited loop of you know all of your pages and it gives you important information at the top which is the percentage of users that came on to your main pages followed by the drop off and it's just a repeated uh, data throughout all of the pages so it's pretty much beginning of the page all the way to the end of the page so if you have an e-commerce site it will tell you where the users have landed so for example from the main page all the way to that checkout page so in my uh, example this is from zoom.mobile which is a review based website and it will tell me the same amount of content so the beginning of the page all the way to the drop off so based on the data right here i'm going to show you a quick example so right now it's telling me in the category halal dessert page there are 34 percent uh, traffic which is good but followed by 65 percent it's not good at all so when i click here uh highlight traffic through here now it gives me a detailed insight of the user flow off the bat i can tell that the users stop navigating after this page so this is where i use my qualitative analysis i will go to hot jar and read the video sessions uh heat map and also do um, competitive research and find out what my competitors are doing and figure out the type of strategy that they're using and maybe I can uh, embed that into my design and hopefully it will be a better success rate. The difference between a bounce rate and an exit rate is that the bounce rate will tell you why the users have left and then the exit rate will tell you where the users have left now there are four important factors that i consider average time spent per page device usage site speed and demographics average time spent per page if it is low i will redesign it or make small design tweaks to increase the time spent per page with device usage, it will help me understand which platform is most important. Most likely with nowadays, it is mobile and then desktop and followed by tablet. With this, if I'm making any design changes or I need to add a new feature, I know which platform to focus on first, followed by obviously desktop and then tablet. 
Side speed is actually one of the most important step as a UX designer. This is where you work very close with the dev team and figure out how to decrease the load time of every single page because the longer the page takes to load, which will make the users leave your platform and most likely visit your competitor sites. Last but not least, demographics. This right here will help you understand the type of audience that you receive in your platform. And it could be age, gender, location, and etc. For example, if you have a lot of users coming from France, therefore you need to have an option on your website that can translate English to French. This is the third um, UX tool that I started using recently, um, about three months ago, I would say. The best part about this is, well, first off, there's a payment plan and then there's a free you know, option right over here. So the best thing about uh, Visualize is this website here will give you a heat map of your design so you can make uh, changes prior sending your design off to, you know, the product testing team or the dev team. So here is a couple of examples that I really like. It's very easy. You can just upload your um, your design the way you do on Envision. I don't know if you use that, but pretty much you can save your design as JPEG. Um, it's available in all three platforms here, XD, Figma, and Sketch. Uh, so you can read the heat maps here. Big brands have used it. This is not a paid sponsorship whatsoever. Here's the old design that Uber did. Um, you have the top uh, menu right here. You got your H tag followed by the image, uh, call to action, call to action here, and a call to action there followed by the form field. Now, if you click on clarity over here, it tells you how cluttered the information is. So at the right hand corner, this is a bit cluttered. The data is actually given, is actually given right here. Green means clear, so this information is cleared followed by the uh, click rate of each uh, call to action followed by the attention that the user's eye will go through this design. So now this is the new design that Uber did based on the data that was given to this platform. Um, they pretty much have changed everything. They put a big image in the background, top navigation, call to action here, call to action there. A um, couple of tabs here. So let's check out the attention. This is perfect. They, you know, the eye immediately goes to the H1 tag followed by the sign up. The background image is a little bit lighter, which is great. And then the sign up call to action has increased. So when you click here, oh, well, it's, I don't know why it's not showing it here, but pretty much when you go to the clarity, you see a lot more green now. So this is exactly the type of data that this uh, platform is called Visual Eyes will give you in your design. And I have been using this a lot lately and I think uh, this is something that I actually wanted like 10, five, 10 years ago. So I'm very glad that I have discovered this. All right. So, well, that is it for today. These are the top three UX analytics tools that I use daily as a UX designer. And it honestly has helped me a lot in terms of my design. I cannot stress this enough. UX or designing a product. It's not always about the design. It's also how can you as a UX designer, learn to use these analytics type of tools to enhance the user experience and also your design as well. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting so hungry right now. I gotta go eat. Thank you so much for watching my video. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below and be sure to follow me on Instagram or Twitter. I'll link this below. Everything that I've mentioned is linked below and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace out.